Welcome to another episode of Focus on GRA, where we delve into the world of tax compliance and its myriad of benefits. I'm your host, Fabian Klaus, and today we'll be exploring the advantages of staying on top of your tax obligations. By ensuring that you're compliant with your tax obligations, you're safeguarding yourself from the stress and anxiety that comes with penalties. It's like having a weight lifted off of your shoulder. But that's not all. Being tax compliant also opens doors to financial benefits, from accessing loans and grants to attracting investors. A clean tax record can be a game changer, ladies and gentlemen. Here's where we tell you more. As much as it is required by law, Honoring tax obligations is a gateway to a host of benefits in the medium and long term for compliant taxpayers. Compliance involves a commitment to good practices, such as keeping records of all business transactions, filing true and correct returns of income from all sources, purchasing the necessary license and practice certificates where applicable, and most importantly, paying taxes due and outstanding. Compliance is a prerequisite for certain transactions at the GRA the majority of which entails transferring a property by way of sale or gift, tendering for government contracts, purchasing the necessary trade and miscellaneous licenses, applying for mortgage interest relief, and small business loans. For the purpose of small business loans, a tender certificate of compliance is required. This document serves as proof that the applicant has honored all his or her tax obligations. The tender compliance is very, very simple. All you need to do is fill the application form. There is one compliance application form, and you would indicate there that you require a tender compliance. All you need is to fill that form. And if you have a business registration, you can attach a copy of your business registration. Of course, you make sure that your business registration has been updated. When the application comes into GRA at our desk, next to the receptionist area there, the staff will look at your application. They will check your return status to make sure that you have submitted all your returns for the past eight years. If you have returns outstanding, the staff will advise you what year is outstanding and return your application to you for you to go back and get those returns to us. If everything is in order, the application will be accepted and the process continues from there. Tax compliance is a requirement for micro small enterprises seeking to access financing from the Small Business Bureau. The Bureau is a semi-autonomous entity that promotes sustained growth for micro-small enterprises. Chief Executive Officer of the Bureau, Mohamed Ibrahim, explains the process. Uh, You have to have your ID card, your TIN, then you have to be compliant. You have to be compliant with the Ghana Revenue Authority and the National Insurance Scheme. So as long as you have these compliances and your business registration, then you can apply and become a client. There is also some specific certifications with respect to food handling or if it's um, something that deals with uh, permits from EPA or from the the, the neighborhood, um, you know, if you're going to operate like a stand in front of your home or so you have to ensure that you have the specific permits. So those um, would be um, needed in order to gain the, the, the services of the Bureau as well. So as long as you have those, all you have to do, it's either you can come into the Bureau or you can access us online through our Facebook page or our website and you will get the specific details on how you can um, register there. Once recognized as a small business, micro small enterprises can access grants, loans, entrepreneurship awareness sessions and other business development support programs. You have to be a registered business in Guyana you have to be um, not employing more than 25 persons and not having a gross annual revenue of more than 60 million Ghana dollars and you have to have um, total business assets not more than 20 million Ghana dollars. So as long as you fall within this category then you can register. This loans program you can access up to 30 million dollars and this can be any business you have, any type of business, as long as, uh, as uh, you, you are registered with the Bureau, you can access this. 
Um, obviously, you'll have to show that you have the capacity to repay and you'll have to have your collateral. However, we assist you with 40 to 70 percent of the collateral coverage as well. So because we know this is a main issue with some of the small businesses, businesses they don't have that capacity to, to show up that amount of collateral. So this is one of the, the ways we assist in the loans program. So and the best thing is we have pretty much one of the lowest interest rate, which is we fix six percent is the interest rate. And you know that that's guaranteed by us. So the program is a loan guarantee program through two of our PFIs. This is our partner financial institutions. This is the Republic Bank and the GBTI. Simultaneously, there is a gamut of tax measures geared towards supporting sustainability, competitiveness, and growth of micro enterprises. Among them, the conditional and non conditional tax exemptions on supplies for small businesses involved in agriculture, fishing industries, construction, and manufacturing. These include zero VAT on feed, packaging materials, and fertilizers for poultry, livestock, and other agriculture stakeholders, hooks, nets, floats, and other supplies for fishing industries, and local and regional materials for construction, conditional exemptions that are subject to approval by the GRA, such as customs duty on materials not obtained in Guyana, require tax compliance. You're watching Focus on GRA. In this program, we're talking about honoring your tax obligations and the benefits that accrue from being tax compliant. Before the break, we were talking about compliance as it relates to persons involved in micro-small enterprises. And in this segment, we will be talking about how tax compliance helps persons who are applying for mortgage interest relief. Persons who are first-time homeowners who would have uh, obtained a loan for the purpose of acquiring their first home, building their first home, or purchasing land for the purpose of construction. The relief, it's really in the form of a tax refund. Why do I say that? Because ideally, only persons who report income and are paying taxes can actually benefit from the refund. The administration of mortgage interest relief is governed by Section 20A1 of the Income Tax Act, Chapter 8101, and the supporting regulations. This law outlines pre-qualifiers for anyone wishing to access this tax relief. It is a relief for first-time homeowners, persons who are now building or acquiring their first home, or purchasing land for the purpose of constructing their first home. You are still eligible for mortgage interest relief if you are the sole or joint owner of the property and sole or joint borrower of the mortgage. However, only one person can be elected to receive the mortgage interest relief. Another thing to consider, it's the loan amount. At present, mortgage interest relief is granted on mortgages that are approved for up to, I should say, $30 million. We are aware that there are times that the first loan taken to construct may not complete the building in its entirety. So yes, you can um, make a further claim for, on an additional loan for the stated purpose of completing the construction of your first home. MIR can be granted on each loan you take out for the purchase of the land or for the construction of your property you applied for the tax relief. You may have an instance, let's say someone obtained a loan for $2 million to first acquire land. Mortgage interest relief can be granted on that loan. Thereafter, the applicant may start construction, obtain a loan for that purpose, uh, perhaps $12 million. So you will now be approved mortgage interest relief on the first loan of $2 million in addition to your second loan of $12 million. Perhaps also that that second loan did not allow you to fully complete uh, your home given the escalating prices. You are able to obtain mortgage interest relief on a further loan. Be aware that the 
total of the loans should not exceed $30 million. So in each instance that your loan uh, particulars change, you must engage the Guyana Revenue Authority to obtain approval on the new loan. Finally, it is important that you are a compliant taxpayer if you wish to qualify for MIR. You must have been filing your tax returns and paying your relevant taxes. Persons should be resident in Guyana. Additionally, you're expected to be residing at the property for which uh, the mortgage interest relief is granted. Taxation is an obligation that you have with the government. As individual and corporate taxpayers, you have a duty to file your tax returns and pay taxes where necessary to the Ghana Revenue Authority. For more information on the tax compliance, visit our website, gra.gov.gy. You can send us your inquiries via email, grapublicrelations at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on our social media pages for up-to-date tax-related information. Thank you for watching. Fabian Krause saying take good care of yourselves and each other.